On August 14th, Petrol Ped released a video called The Truth About EV Battery Life and Charging Best Practices. This is a really cracking video and I highly recommend anyone who's interested in EVs watching it if you haven't done so already. It'll be linked from the end screen of this video if you want to watch it after this one. However, one small thing came out of it that I felt I wanted to discuss. So in this video, we're going to talk about Renault Zoe battery degradation. So first things first, I should say that Moggy, the guy from Electric Classic Cars who does a lot of the talking in this video, is very much an expert and I'm not. He's taken apart and put back together way more electric cars than I've ever driven. He really knows his stuff. And so I'm not saying in this video that anything that he says is wrong, but I do think that momentarily he simplified one thing. Video on YouTubes can risk being too long and the longer they are, the less likely there is for someone to watch them. So you always have to make a choice about what you include and what you don't. However, making a supplementary video like this one can bring a little bit more clarity to a subsection. And in this case, it's a very, very small subsection of that video that I just want to call out. So the quotation from the video is this. The older generation cars that didn't have thermal management on their batteries, and I'll come to that in a minute, the older generation electric cars, like first generation Nissan Leafs and Renault Zoes, their battery degradation was worse because they weren't keeping their battery temperatures in their happy Goldilocks zone. So the thing that stood out to me about that quotation is whether Leafs and Zoes should be grouped together in quite the way they were in that sentence. And the answer, of course, is complicated. Yes, they definitely fit together in one regard, and indeed in two regards, it sort of makes sense to group them together. But I think there's another way in which they don't quite fit together in that sentence, and that's what I wanted to discuss. So Leafs and Zoes were early generation electric cars, and so grouping them together by mentioning them uh, together in that sentence totally makes sense, because that's very much true. They were one of the uh, early sets of cars, of three or four really, that we know of as being uh, widespread uh, early modern EVs. They also both use air cooling for their batteries, so that also suggests that they are closely related in some regard. However, there is quite an important difference, which I'm going to cover next. So the Nissan LEAF uses passive air cooling. There is no active air cooling system on a Nissan LEAF. So really, it might be simpler to say, there is no cooling system on the battery of a Nissan LEAF. As a result of that, battery degradation on the LEAF is quite high. And even more so if rapid charged, because that's what, one of the things that heats the battery up quite a lot. And indeed, the cars that were built in Japan, the first year or two years of cars, that came directly from Japan used a battery chemistry which was actually not very good either. So that compounds the issue even further on those very early cars. And therefore the Nissan LEAF has become quite famous for quite high battery degradation. Now we are talking degradation here. It's a reduction in the overall capacity of the battery that can be used on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not that the car fails completely, just that you can't get quite as far as you used to be able to on a single charge. And on the early Leafs, because they had a very limited range, that might have quite a big impact in terms of the fact that you might have bought a car that just about does what you need, perhaps in the winter, and then suddenly it doesn't do what you need anymore as it uh, degrades a little bit. In contrast, the Renault Zoe uses an active air cooling system, so it is actively monitoring the temperature of the battery and modifying it. What it does is it blows air past a chiller that is part of the heat pump circuit and then through the battery or at least the outer casing of the battery. So there is no liquid cooling that runs through the battery circuit in a Renault Zoe and certainly that does uh, mean that it's very similar in a leaf in some ways but the fact that it's active means that it is quite different. And indeed if we zoom out and think about the car from a wider perspective you could say that everything is air-cooled. What do I mean by that? 
Well, in most modern EVs, what they do is they pump a water and glycol mixture through the motor and the battery um, and the inverter and possibly a couple of other bits as well. And then they pump that to a radiator. And it's the radiator's job to dissipate that heat to the surrounding air. So in a way, all cars are air-cooled. It's a question of whether there's a water circuit that is involved in that or not. But at the end of the day, dissipation is always going to happen to the air because that's all we have. So what the Zoe does was it shortcutted having the water circuit. It misses out on having that liquid system. And I suspect that's perhaps to do with simplicity and cost. There would be less to go wrong if you don't have that um, water cooling system going all the way to the battery towards the back of the car. Most systems use water because water has a very high thermal conductivity. Water is very good at wicking away heat from something that's warm and then transporting it away when it's pumped. So the th lower thermal conductivity of air might mean that the transfer of uh, heat away from the battery is less perfect in a Zoe, but it might be good enough. You see, when we're engineering something, we're always making trade-offs in a design. And I think in this case, what they were probably doing, although this is guesswork, of course, is balancing the cost of the car with the performance of the cooling system. And if they thought they could get enough cooling using air cooling system, then that might have been cheaper and simpler than trying to use a water cooling system. Now, one way to mitigate the lower thermal conductivity of air is to limit the potential for temperature swings in a car. I think that is probably why the Zoe ZE50 has a limited DC rapid charging speed. In the early days, the Zoe uh, came out with a 22 kilowatt hour battery and it was AC charging only, and that continued when it was refreshed and became the ZE40 with a 41 kilowatt hour battery. They were only AC charging. When the ZE50 came around, it was a much bigger refresh. So it was like a mid-cycle refresh, that they call it, in the car industry, where more things changed. And one of the things that changed, as well as the styling on the front and the interior, which changed quite significantly, as well as that battery, one of the things that changed was that for the first time, the Zoe became available with DC rapid charging, although it was an option. At that point, what they could have done was put bigger, fatter uh, cables from uh, the, the charge port on the front into the battery. There was no reason why they couldn't do that, in the sense that that DC wiring had never existed at that point. So if you're going to put all that cabling in and making uh, a DC rapid charging system, maybe you could put fatter cables directly into the battery. But they didn't do that, and I suspect the reason why is that there was a limitation on the cooling that was the car was capable of because of its air cooling choice earlier in its life. Now it would have been a massive re-engineering project to take the car and give it water cooling during a mid-cycle refresh and that is just too big and too expensive a thing for them ever to have done. So I think they were limited by the choices that were made early in the day with the Renault Zoe of having an air cooling system. And so that's why I think the, the ZE50 is probably limited to its 46 kilowatt DC rapid charging speed. Now, that is uh, not something I can prove, but that's my suspicion. So does the Zoe suffer battery degradation to any significant extent? Well, the answer is yes, in the sense that all electric cars suffer battery degradation, at least to some extent. However, as far as I know, the Zoe has never been known for a significant battery degradation, not to the extent that the LEAF has. Indeed, I have no specific data on this. I haven't found anywhere where there is any data available. But anecdotally, I believe the Zoe battery to hold up really quite well. And it seems that most people have been quite impressed with the Zoe's battery longevity. But having said that, maybe Moggy knows something that I don't. But the point I would say to you is, don't dump your Zoe's, don't rush out and offload them like the plague onto the second-hand market. I believe the battery degradation is slow and probably quite small. The Zoe, after all, is a cost-effective super mini, and therefore, there will be a number of compromises that were made in its design. And probably, I think, the Zoe will probably die from rust rather than from an electrical failure, particularly significant degradation in the battery.
However, only time will tell. The ZE50 is a relatively new car, although it uses a very well understood battery chemistry. But I guess we'll find out in the future. So please don't think that I'm trying to pick holes with the petrol ped video in this one. I'm definitely not trying to do that. I think that was an excellent video, but there was just a tiny bit of it that I wanted to call out. I should also say I'm also not trying to profiteer from petrol ped's larger and frankly much better video channel. For those of you that know me, I'm not that kind of YouTuber and indeed those of you that know me well will know I'm not actually a YouTuber at all. Moggy from Electric Classic Cars really knows his electric onions and so there's a chance he's seen things that I haven't seen, but certainly I'm not aware of any issues. So what was my motivation if it isn't to profiteer or to uh, criticise? Well what I wanted to do was to provide Zoe owners, existing owners and potential owners some reassurance about their cars. To paraphrase Twister, Zoe is good, Zoe is wise. I don't think there's a problem with battery degradation in the Renault Zoe, not to a significant extent. And certainly the second-hand listings seem to support this. The Zoe in its various guises has been around a long time, and there are a lot of them in your favourite listings uh, location, whatever that may be, that seem to support that they hang around a long time and that there's no significant battery degradation to be reported. Unlike the Leaf, where owners talk about the degradation as part of selling it, how many um, parts of that section that the Leaf shows has it lost in its lifetime. Now, to be fair, the Zoe doesn't have a display like that, um, but I don't think that it suffers from bad degradation. And of course, we would be able to see that through things like Kanzi uh, if there was an issue. That is something that you can use to check the degradation on your car. The other thing that supports my theory is that EVM has just bought one, Electric Vehicle Man. Now he's careful with his money and whilst he's not intending to keep that car long term, I don't think, I don't think he would have bought a car which he thought was going to suffer significantly from battery degradation. And what is more, his drive back from Wales with that car seems to suggest that its, uh, its range was still very, very good despite the age of the car. Well, so that's it for another video. I'd love to hear your comments, questions and thoughts in the section below. If you've enjoyed the video, then please consider clicking the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you've appreciated it and it may result in it being promoted to other people. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.